In the today's lecture, uh, I shall continue the problems on uh, linear differential equations with uh, constant coefficients. I hope you are much familiar uh, when we discussed in the previous lecture about the types of the roots and the equation. We call it as homogeneous differential equation. Uh, you must be aware of it. We are studying linear differential equation with constant coefficients. <coughs> The general form of the linear differential equation is given by f of d y is equal to x of x. We studied in our previous lectures uh, the types of the roots, what we are getting on the right side and left side. Suppose here we have two cases, if x of x equal to 0, then this equation 1 is called homogeneous. homogeneous differential equation. If x of x is not equal to 0, then it is non-homogeneous differential equation. So, presently we are studying homogeneous differential equations. What are the types of roots which occur in this homogeneous differential equation when x of x equal to 0? So, that only the left side we are going to talk about and how the roots are to be obtained and uh, how the solution according to the types of roots which we are going to write. Let me take an example because in this case when in the case of this homogeneous differential equation we have three cases. One is about the roots I am telling that is roots are real and different. then roots are real and repeated, then roots are imaginary. Here roots are real and different that gives converting f of d in the form of auxiliary equation that is replacing d by m. Therefore, this is capital D where d stands for derivative, it is first order derivative and d square stands for second order derivative and so on, where we will replace this d, d by m and f of d y for the homogeneous function that becomes as some equation replacement of that is d by m. We call it as auxiliary equation. Auxiliary equation means which will give the numbers like <coughs> this suggests m1, m2 and so on. They are all the roots, they are all the numbers which represent as roots of the equation. Then each root will be taken for writing the corresponding solution. That means solution for the first root is y1 and solution for the second root is y2 followed by corresponding constants that is c1, c2, c3, c4 and so on. Okay. So, the, this is about uh, roots are real and different. Real and different means m1 is not equal to m2, this is not equal to m3 and so on. That is the first case. In the second case, roots are real and repeated that means m1 equal to m2 that is equal to and so on is equal to some number that is some number means b or a or alpha or beta or something like that, that is equal to b. Then the solution will be written followed by <coughs> the first term uh, constant and then first term x to the power 0, second term x to the power 1, third term x to the power 2 and so on. So, as and when I get in the problem I will explain, then roots are real and imaginary. Suppose we have m is equal to alpha plus or minus i beta, this is called imaginary roots. That means alpha is a real part 
and i beta is a imaginary part. Then we will write two roots uh, like uh, alpha plus i beta that is exponential to the power and uh, alpha minus i beta in the second term we will be writing the roots. So, according to those two roots we will write the solution that is y is equal to c 1 e to the power alpha plus i beta x plus c 2 e to the power alpha minus i beta x. Then we will use uh, from the complex numbers that is Euler's theorem, uh, we will expand that e to the power i theta as cos theta plus i sin theta and cos theta minus i sin theta. After the simplification, you will get the solution as y is equal to c 1 that is e to the power alpha x cos beta x plus c 2 e to the power uh, alpha x and sin beta x. So, these two are the solutions which we can represent for imaginary roots. Okay. So, based on this information, I will write an example now. Already uh, we studied some problems, but uh, this is the continuation of those problems. Uh, so, I shall take the next problem and of uh, some different uh, type of uh, statement of the problem. Okay. So, the problem is like this. Solve d square y plus d y minus 30 y is equal to 0. Then this is directly they are given in terms of d otherwise if they give like derivative then you put it in the form of d afterwards auxiliary equation we will consider. Okay. Then this equation can be taken as d square plus d minus 30 operating on y is equal to 0. It is not that it is a common factor, uh, y is a common factor. This d square means second order derivative operates on y, you will get second order differential coefficient and uh, d operates on y, you will get dy by dx and 30 is multiplied by y like that. So, this is resembling f of d y is equal to 0. This is called homogeneous differential equation. I told you that if right side is 0, then you will get uh, the differential equation which is called as homogeneous differential equation. Okay. We have to convert this or we have to write the for the existing differential equation by making that f of d in terms of f of m. That means, replacement of d by m. Okay auxiliary equation auxiliary equation for this is f of d is equal to f of m is equal to here m square plus m minus 30 equal to 0. That means, m square plus m minus 30 is equal to 0. This is the equation that is f of d that is equal to f of m is equal to 0, you have to you do not take this y, you write only f of d and in place of d you replace that m. Okay. So, now this is a quadratic equation, this is a quadratic equation, quadratic equation means it must possess two roots. Okay. If it is possible uh, directly by inspection method, you can write the roots, if it is not possible then you go for algebraic method of writing the roots. Okay. In any way you can uh, treat the uh, calculation of uh, these roots, okay. but 30 multiples of 30 you can have like m square and uh, that is 6 phi of 30 that is 6 m you can split like this and minus of 5 m simplification gives us m and minus 30 that is equal to 0 this is directly by uh, inspection method that means observing the coefficient first and last if you take the multiplication then middle two terms you must write uh, by the simplification you must get that the given uh, second term in the problem. The second term in the problem means m and total is that is minus 30 m square and if you multiply these two 6 into 5 that is 30 that is m into m is uh, m square and plus into minus is minus. Therefore, minus 30 m square you can split like this and then you can collect the corresponding roots.
those roots are from the first one m into m plus 6 and plus of uh, uh, sorry minus is common you can write minus phi if you take that is m and plus of that is phi 6 or 30 that is equal to 0. Then this gives m minus phi m minus phi and this is common m plus 6 that is equal to 0. These are the two factors for the quadratic equation. Uh, second degree equation is there you must get to two roots by writing two independent factors. This implies m is equal to phi and minus of 6 two values of m you will be expecting. That means this you can treat them as m1 comma m2 respectively. This implies roots are real and different, real and different. Three types of cases we discussed real and different, real and repeated and imaginary roots. This comes in the first uh, type of writing the roots and, and its corresponding solution. Therefore, this is y is a dependent variable and uh, independent variable it is not given and you can treat that as d by dx when you represent for capital D then x becomes the independent variable then you can write y in terms of x. Therefore, y is equal to c1 e to the power m1 x plus c2 e to the power it is m2 into x. Therefore, it should be c1 e to the power 5 x plus c2 e to the power minus of 6 x. This is the value y is there. Therefore, y is equal to c1 e to the power 5 x plus c2 e to the power minus of 6 x. This is the solution for this problem. Similarly, another problem we shall discuss with another type of roots. Example, solve d square y minus 8 d y and plus 16 y equal to 0. This is the different situation when you compare with the previous problem. Uh, d square y minus 8 uh, minus 8 d y and uh, plus of 16 y is there. As usual you write taking that uh, y outside not as a common factor, but it is a dependent variable. In the solution let d square minus 8 d plus 16 operating on y is equal to 0. Once again you can compare this one with f of d y is equal to 0. This is a function of d, function of differential coefficient where d is equal to d by dx, d square is equal to d square divided by it is dx square. This is called linear differential operator, first order derivative and second order derivative. It is a symbol, linear differential operator is a symbol. It is a derivative operates on dependent variable as a, as a result you will be getting dy by dx if you operate d. Now, what are the uh, factors here for uh, auxiliary equation? Auxiliary equation you must write. Auxiliary equation is given by, auxiliary equation is given by m square minus 8 d, uh, sorry, minus 8 m and plus 16 that is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation m square minus 8 m plus 16 that is equal to 0. How this equation you can uh, accept for writing the factors means <coughs> 16 is there you can write 4 square where 4 into 2 gives us 8. Therefore, with minus sign is there this you can compare like uh, a square minus 2 a b and plus of b square is equal to 0 exactly it is of that type. Then what is this equation a minus b it is whole square equal to 0. Similarly, here 
m this must be 4 means m minus 4 whole square you can write because 4 into 2 gives us middle coefficient as 8. Therefore, m minus 4 whole square is equal to 0 is the auxiliary equation. This gives m minus 4 into m minus 4 that is equal to 0. This gives two values of m that is m equal to m 1 uh, should be 4 and m equal to m 2 that should be 4. Therefore, uh, m uh, two values are there here we call roots are real and equal roots are real and equal. Therefore, roots are real and equal means the solution solution is given by solution is given by y is equal to c 1 e to the power 4 x plus c 2 x into e to the power 4 x. For the roots are repeated you must go on multiplying x to the power 0, x to the power 1, x to the power 2, x to the power 3 and so on according to the number of roots existing in the auxiliary equation. Further you can write this one as it should be c 1 plus c 2 that is multiplied by x and this will be the common factor e to the power 4 x. So, this is the second case that means roots are real and equal and previous one was roots were real, but they were different or roots were not equal to each other, but here both the roots are equal to each other. In that case uh, second term x third term x square like that. So, this you must remember whenever the roots are repeated. Okay. So, next problem let me take in a, in a different uh, condition. Solve d cube plus d square plus d plus 1 operating on y is equal to 0. This is another situation which is uh, different from the previous two cases. How this problem gives the solution and how to uh, obtain the roots of the equation after converting from this existing form to the auxiliary form. Solution same type this is already in the uh, standard form that is f of d operating on y that is equal to 0. f of d operating on y is means this is function of differential operator then auxiliary equation. What is the auxiliary equation? f of m means f of d is equal to f of m that is equal to 0. <coughs> so, wherever d is that you replace that d by m therefore, it must be m cube plus m square plus m plus 1 <coughs> it is equal to 0. Here uh, so for this type of equations we do not have uh, standard formulas in order to write the factors. First of all you have to write if it is possible directly you can write, but when it is not possible then we go for trial and verification method for which number of m for which value of m this equation satisfies then you can take that equation that uh, number itself as one value or number itself as one root of the equation. Then you go for division of this uh, reduce from third degree equation to the second degree equation. So, that those steps I am going to write now that means for which number this equation satisfies that we will have to search that means that is by trial and verification. Obviously, this, this is a third degree equation it must possess three values it must possess three values means m 1, m 2, m 3. Okay. So, for which number presently this equation satisfies. So, that you can write you can uh, verify as a trial here let m is equal to anyway all the terms are positive this equation will never satisfy if you go on giving positive values it is uh, it is very clear because this is positive this is positive this is positive and this is positive any positive number 
uh, will not give the answer as 0 because right side is 0. Therefore, you can think of uh, replacement of m by negative numbers. Therefore, let m is equal to if you take minus 1, let us verify this m satisfies uh, as minus 1 or not. Okay. Then minus 1 whole cube, the first term plus of minus 1 whole square, next is minus 1 and uh, plus 1 equal to 0. You must get left side as 0. If you get left side as 0, then you can write that uh, uh, equation LHS is equal to RHS, the values are satisfied. Okay. Minus 1 whole cube means minus 1 and this is plus 1 and this is minus 1 and this is plus 1 equal to 0. Therefore, minus 1 with uh, plus 1, minus 1 with plus 1, it is equal to 0. Therefore, 0 is equal to 0, the equation satisfies. That means, m equal to minus 1 becomes 1 among the 3 roots, 1 among the 3 values. Then, we will make use of that uh, number itself as the factor by writing that minus 1 to the left side. We will, we will uh, proceed to find out the quadratic function. <coughs> Therefore, m equal to minus 1 implies m plus 1 equal to 0 is 1 factor, is 1 factor. So, this is an advantage. We will make use of this factor to reduce third degree equation into second degree equation. Okay. Let m minus, sorry, m plus 1 you will have to divide this, the whole function m cube and uh, m square plus, uh, plus m and plus 1. Okay. So, what is the first coefficient you have to attach? This is m square, you have to multiply m cube, m square into m, m cube plus m square okay, plus 1 into m square, that is m plus 1 and m cube plus m square plus m plus 1. Okay. This is 0 and this is 0, m square m square on subtraction that is m plus 1. Uh, plus of m you have to take and plus of m means that is m square and plus of 1, right? that is m plus 1 if you take that is m square plus 1, uh, sorry plus 1 if you take m plus 1, that becomes 0. Therefore, m plus 1 into m square, uh, actually that is m 1, 1 m, that will be m square and uh, m already m square you have taken that becomes m cube and m square into 1 that becomes m square. On subtraction this cancels, both the terms uh, uh, at a time they have been cancelled and m is there. So, m is there means plus 1 if you take then it is 1 plus m already 1 is taken, therefore it is remainder is 0, that is m square plus 1 equal to 0. Therefore, two factors you are getting, if you multiply you must get it back the same original given function. Therefore, that is for example, if you want to check this m cube that is uh, plus of m, okay, m uh, by m if you multiply m cube and 1 into m that is plus m and here that is m square, here m square and 1 into 1 that is plus 1. Therefore, m cube plus m square plus m plus 1 equal to 0. So, this is equal to 0, then your division is correct. Therefore, m plus 1 into m, m square plus 1 will be two factors, one is linear and the other one is quadratic. Linear that is m plus 1 and quadratic is that is m square plus 1 equal to 0 then uh, should be that is m is equal to minus 1, this is one value and m square is equal to minus 1. What is this m square is equal to minus 1? m is equal to plus or minus root of it is minus 1, this is equal to plus or minus root of minus 1 is i because 
i square i square is equal to minus 1 i is equal to square root of minus 1 therefore square root of minus 1 i am taking it as i and m is equal to plus or minus that is square root of minus 1 thereby totally we have m is equal to minus 1 and plus or minus i this is nothing but minus 1 0 plus or minus 1 into i this is nothing but alpha plus or minus i beta so this one for the second root you can compare so this is one root uh, one root as real that is minus 1 real root okay and this is called imaginary root imaginary roots imaginary roots so this problem takes the combination of one value as real and another set of uh, roots as imaginary roots therefore totally three values one is minus 1 another one is plus i and one more is that is minus i so what are the values of alpha and beta alpha is equal to 0 and beta is equal to 1 into i that becomes beta is equal to 1 therefore you will write the solution with a combination of solution for real root and solution for imaginary root therefore two solutions you are now putting in one statement that means in one line that is the final solution for this third degree uh, equation of uh, auxiliary that means third order derivative uh, given in the problem therefore solution is given by solution is given by y is equal to c1 c1 e to the power minus 1x e to the power minus x plus of c2 e to the power 0x into cos of beta x means 1 into x plus c3 e to the power 0x because alpha is 0 alpha is 0 and sin of 1 into x that is sin of beta x therefore beta is equal to 1 finally y is equal to it is c1 e to the power minus x plus of c2 cos x plus of c3 it is sin x this is the solution so far we have studied in this lecture three problems three different problems respectively for three different cases of the types of solution for the homogeneous differential equation the first one we studied roots are real and different second one we studied roots are uh, real and uh, equal and the last one we studied this problem roots are one real and another uh, set of roots are imaginary that means combination of real and imaginary so these three cases uh, study these three cases properly so that you can extend to any number of uh, different types of uh, examples so that you can apply the concept and then see that uh, how this is going to be utilized now i shall take another example with uh, uh, certain initial conditions how those initial conditions are going to be satisfied in the problems then the how those initial conditions will help us to find out the constants that we will see now the next problem exactly based on this information problems i am going to write with some initial conditions even without initial conditions some different varieties of problems also you have to study in this case okay example solve d square minus d minus 6 operating on y equal to 0 when x equal to 0 y equal to 2 and y dash is equal to 1 and y dash is equal to 1 how to arrive the solution and how to arrive at a conclusion of calculation of c1 and c2 in this problem you will have to 
study in detail. Okay. Solution let f of d y is equal to 0 that is d square minus d minus 6 operating on y equal to 0. What is the next step? You have to write the auxiliary equation. That should be without y the auxiliary equation f of d equal to f of m equal to 0 should be m square minus m minus 6 equal to 0. Now, the middle term is with negative sign and the last term is also with negative sign that is 6 m square. How you can split this 6 m square? You can write like this m square minus 3 m plus of 2 m because the multiples of 6 are 3 into 2 otherwise 2 into 3 you can write and minus of 6 is equal to 0. Hope you understood uh, uh, this step. We are trying by uh, the direct inspection method 6 multiples we are going to write that is 3 and 2 and uh, looking to the sign that is minus sign in the second term minus sign means uh, after the subtraction you must get minus sign that is minus 3 m plus 2 m will give you that is minus m. Therefore, this should be m square means m into uh, m minus 3 first term from these two you can take common and plus 2 into it should be m minus 3 that is equal to 0. Then we got two factors one is m minus 3 and the another factor is m plus 2 this implies m minus 3 into m plus 2 equal to 0. Then this implies m equal to plus 3 and m is equal to minus of 2 these are the two roots. Uh, what, what kind of roots you have are the real and distinct roots real and different otherwise real and distinct roots. Okay. How you have to write? How you have to proceed for this? That is writing the solution for the roots which are real and different. Distinct is the same meaning with different. That means m1 is not equal to m2. That means 3 is not equal to minus 2. Okay. Therefore, the solution the solution is given by solution is given by y is equal to c1 e to the power 3x plus c2 e to the power minus of 2x. This is the final solution in terms of arbitrary constants that is c1 and c2 where these two constants can be calculated by the help of this initial condition. Otherwise, this itself will be the uh, solution if these conditions are not given. When the conditions are given, we will make use of these conditions to find out the values of C1 and C2 and how these values of C1 and C2 can be analyzed or uh, C1 and C2 can be determined using the initial conditions we shall see now. That is x is connected to y and x is connected to y dash. Why it is so? Because x is a independent variable and y is dependent variable because you have the derivative this is d, d stands for dy dx when it is operating on y this is dy, this is dy by dx. Similarly, d square y d is equal to d square y divided by it is dx square like that. Then x is common for both first order derivative and second order derivative. That means, x will act as independent variable and y will act as dependent variable. We will make use of those initial conditions x refers to first number and x refers to second number. Uh, because two sets of uh, initial conditions we uh, do require two sets of initial conditions because there are two constants otherwise this is a second order derivative then you must 
you must be uh, expecting two minimum conditions to calculate the values of constants. Otherwise, if one set of initial condition is there means only one among these two constants you can calculate and another one you cannot calculate. Okay. So, now we will go for this d square minus d minus 6 that is operating on y is equal to 0 at the first set of initial conditions. Now, what is the first set at x equal to 0 and y is equal to 2. x equal to 0, y is equal to 2 means left side this is 2, we can take if you name it as equation 1. So, 1 implies 2 that is y equal to 2 it is given, then right side it is equal to c 1, it is equal to c 1 e to the power that is x equal to 0, e to the power 3 into 0 plus of c 2, c 2 e to the power minus 2 into it is 0. Then what, the, what is the simplification you will be getting here? That should be left side 2 as it is and right side it is c 1 and plus of c 2. Call this equation as 2. Still from this equation we cannot separate or we cannot calculate one among those two constants, but constants will remain as constants only in the equation. Let us try for application of another initial conditions. Now, at uh, x equal to 0 and y dash z equal to 1 in equation 1. Okay. So, 1 implies dy by dx because it is not in the derivative form. So, now we will take the derivative form that is in place of y we will write that is dy by dx. So, what is the differentiation on the right side that is c 1 uh, dy by dx is equal to 3 times c 1 e to the power 3 x differentiation of exponential term keeping c 1 as constant e to the power 3 x gives us 3 into 3 into e to the power 3 x and second term minus 2 because there is a minus 2 is there and c 2 right this is e to the power minus of 2 x. Then now this condition helps us y dash means d y by d x it is nothing but derivative right. This is equal to 1 left side you have to equate and same x equal to 0 3 c 1 okay, into e to the power 3 into 0 minus 2 times c 2 e to the power minus 2 into 0 this becomes 1 is equal to that is 3 c 1 you write as it is and this becomes 1 and this becomes 1 minus 2 times of it is c 2. So, this gives us equation number 3 this gives gives us equation number 3. Okay. When this gives us equation number 3 means c 1 solving equations 2 and 3 for what purpose we have to calculate the values of the constants solving uh, 2 and 3 for c 1 and c 2. First equation that is c 1 plus c 2 is equal to 2 3 c 1 and minus of 2 c 2 is equal to 1. You have two equations with two constants it is uh, mathematical condition holds good equal number of unknowns with equal number of equations. How many equations you have? Two equations. How many constants you have? Two constants. Then you must get unique solution. We call it as unique solution. Then that unique solution will be like this that is C 1 that means here coefficient 3 is not there uh, either C 1 you can cancel or C 2 you can cancel. Okay. Let me multiply the first equation by 3 making any one of these two coefficients same and then we try to uh, uh, subtract so that we can cancel that. What is that? So, 3 c 1 plus of 3 c 2 is equal to 6 and 3 c 1 minus 2 times c 2 is equal to 1. So, now I will I will subtract this then this term cancels when I subtract this means 5 times this is equal to 5 times c 2 this is equal to subtracting 
this becomes 5. Therefore, this implies this implies uh, C 2 is equal to 5 divided by 5 that is equal to 1, 5 5 cancels. Therefore, C 2 is equal to 1. Out of these two constants C 1 and C 2, one constant we were able to um, achieve by solving two equations simultaneously. Then second constant, if you make use of any one equation, either the first equation or the second equation, introducing that value of C 2, then you will be able to calculate the value of another constant. So, C 1 plus C 2 is equal to 2, put this C 2 is equal to 1, that is C 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and C 1 is equal to 2 minus 1, that is equal to 1. Therefore, C 1 is equal to 1 and C 2 is equal to 1. What is your final solution? This is equation number 1. Therefore, therefore required solution required solution 1 gives by the introduction of these calculated values okay that is 2 minus 1 then y is equal to c1 c1 is 1 e to the power 3x plus c2 that is c2 is also 1 e to the power minus of it is 2x then finally, the last step is y is equal to e to the power 3 x plus of e to the power minus of it is 2 x. This is your final solution. Similarly, we will try other examples with the different initial conditions. example solve d cube minus 3 d square plus 9 d plus 13 operating on y that is equal to 0 with with initial conditions that is 13 x equal to 0, y equal to 0, y dash is equal to 1 and y double dash is equal to 6. This is another uh, uh, good example where you can uh, extend your idea for from second order derivative to the third order derivative and one more uh, set of initial conditions is required it is given that is y double dash that means second order derivative value is also given okay let me let us write the first solution in this fashion after writing uh, auxiliary equation then you must come to know what are the roots of the equation after that how the roots are to be introduced as solution method so that that solution can be utilized in order to find out the values of the constants right that is in the solution we can write let f of d y is equal to 0 be the homogeneous differential equation. This is homogeneous differential equation. Okay. Let the auxiliary equation auxiliary equation be that is m cube minus m cube minus 3 m square plus of 9 m plus 13 is equal to 0. So, this is third degree equation, we cannot get the roots directly, then we have to go for trial and verification method. For what number this equation satisfies, so that you have to see and how this equation is going to give us the roots uh, as three different uh, roots, we will verify. Let let us take uh, m is equal to plus 1. m is equal to plus 1 if you take this becomes 1 minus 3 plus 9 and plus 13. Okay. For the plus 1 you are going to take. So, 1 minus 3 and 9 plus 9 plus 13 is not equal to 0. Then uh, m is equal to opposite number you take 
opposite number means m is equal to minus 1. So, minus 1 whole cube minus 3 into minus 1 whole square plus of 9 into it is minus 1 and 13 is equal to 0. Then after this minus 1 whole cube gives us minus 1 and this gives us minus 3 okay. and this becomes that is minus 9 right and this is plus 13 this is equal to 0. That means simplification you must get on the right side whatever it is given if it you, if you achieve that simplification then you will be getting a root. Okay. So, what is this simplification minus 1 minus 3 and minus 9 that is minus 13 and plus 13 is equal to 0 obviously you are getting 0 is equal to 0 therefore m is equal to minus 1 holds good for this equation m is equal to minus 1 holds good means that is it satisfies the equation as one of the roots this implies m is equal to minus 1 is one root one root what what it implies as a factor m plus 1 is equal to 0 is one factor m plus 1 is equal to 0 is one factor means first factor you can say. Now, to get the auxiliary equation you have to divide the given function by this factor that is m plus 1 you have to divide the completely the given equation that is m cube 3 m square plus 9 m plus 13 may be multiplied by m square it is m cube plus m square on subtraction minus 4 m square plus 9 m you take combine that with this uh, 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 remainder here remainder is that is minus 4 m square and uh, this is plus 9 m you are taking this term as it is. So, minus 4 m if you take 4 m square same term you are getting and minus of 4 m what is the subtraction this is 13 m because this minus becomes plus sign you have to add it 9 plus 4 is 13 and this 13 you have to combine that 13 will be multiplied 13 into m 13 m 13 into 1 plus 13. So, this remainder is 0. So, remainder is 0 uh, till that you have to achieve the division process. Okay. Then m plus 1 into that much will be will become the factors m plus 1 into m square minus 4 m plus 13 equal to 0. Then this is a linear factor already we have the root, but for the quadratic factor we have to find out the roots. So, what are those two roots? Now, uh, let here m square minus 4 m plus 13 is there this is an odd number 13 is the odd number it does not give the multiples of uh, multiples so that uh, you can get the middle number it does not give. So, that we can go for the algebraic method let m square minus 4 m plus 13 is equal to 0 implies m is equal to minus b plus minus root of it is b square minus 4 a c divided by it is 2 a what is the value minus b that means a equal to 1 b equal to minus 4 and c is equal to 13 let us verify minus b that means minus 4 that becomes plus 4 plus minus root of b square it is 16 4 a c that is 4 in minus 4 into 1 into it is 13 divided by 2 into it is 1 then so what is the numerator simplification m is equal to 4 plus or minus that is divided by 2 and 13 into 4 so 13 into 4 means what that is 4 3 is 12 1 that is 52 therefore 52 uh, and 16 minus of 52 16 minus of 52 how much you are getting so 52 16 that is 6 and 4 minus 1 is 3 
that is 36 with minus sign because minus 52 is there minus of it is uh, 36 correct huh? so minus of 36 comes under the root therefore you will get imaginary value therefore m is equal to 4 plus or minus root of minus 36 means that is root of minus 1 into root of 36 root of 36 uh, square root of 36 is 6 you can write that is 6 times divided by 2 multiplied by i finally 4 plus or minus this is 4 by 2 4 by 2 plus or minus 6 by 2 means 3 i therefore this is finally 2 plus or minus it is 3 i therefore 3 values of m you can expect uh, as roots of the equation m is equal to m is equal to first number as minus 1 and another number as 2 plus or minus it is 3 i m is equal to 2 plus or minus 3 i then uh, finally you can write the solution that is y is equal to c1 e to the power minus x and uh, c2 e to the power because this is alpha plus or minus i beta this value e to the power 2x and cos of it is 3x plus c3 e to the power that is 2x and sin of it is 3x this is the solution before using the initial conditions this is the solution okay so that is 2 plus or minus 3i and uh, uh, another root is uh, m is equal to minus 1 uh, i shall stop up to here and i'll continue the solution uh, in my next lecture thank you